Okay, so we're going to look now at curve sketching. And so in order to do curve sketching, you basically are going to put everything together um, that we learned in this chapter plus what you know from algebra. So basically from algebra, you know how to identify x and y intercepts. You can find out if a function is even or odd and determine symmetry. You know how to find the domain and range of a function. Uh, and then in calculus, you learn how to discuss continuity, identify vertical asymptotes, uh, determine if a function is differentiable. You can identify extrema, a concavity, increase where a function is increasing, decreasing, and then horizontal asymptotes and limits at infinity. And also, we talk I talk about slam asymptotes in this section as well. So I'm just going to give you a few examples here and just show you what you can do to try to put all this together. So basically, let's start with a, just a simple polynomial function. So here's a here's a, a polynomial function here. Now you know that if x is zero, y is zero. That's easy. So you've got um, you've got an intercept of zero zero, and then if y is zero, you solve this equation. And I'm not going to do the algebra and the calculus for you. I'm going to assume by now you can do uh, solve equations and and find derivatives. So basically, you solve this equation, and you get that um, x equals 0 or plus or minus the square root of 5 thirds. So plus or minus square root of 5 thirds are your x-intercepts. A couple other things we know. We know polynomial functions. Their domains are real numbers, and their range is all real numbers most of the time. And they're continuous for all real numbers. We know they don't have any asymptotes. And then uh, using the derivative, we can determine... Uh, where the function is increasing decreasing so find the derivative and then set it equal to zero get your critical numbers and then um, I went ahead and used the second derivative test to determine um, where I've got maximum and minimum so basically using what I knew before I know that this function is increasing from negative infinity to negative one and one to infinity and decreasing from negative one to one I know f of 0 is not an extrema based on the first derivative test. I did that on scratch paper. And then um, negative 1, 2 is a relative max, and 1, negative 2 is a relative min. And then the second derivative, when I set it equal to 0, I got three possible points of inflection. I got 0 plus or minus square root of a half, and those were the possible um, points of inflection. Now, I'm not sure there's something got in the way here, but but anyway, um, if if you evaluate the derivative, second derivative at negative 1 to the left of 0, um, um, you get its concave down. Actually, to the left of negative square root of a half, you get its concave down. And then if you pick a number between negative square root of a half and, and 0, so I did negative 0.5, I found it was concave up on that interval. And then when I picked a number between 0 and uh, square root of a half, I found it's concave down. And then when I picked a number to the right of square root of a half, I found it's concave up. So basically, the graph is concave down on these intervals, concave up on these intervals. And then these points, when I plugged in square root of minus square root of a half and square root of a half, I kind of got some weird numbers. Those are the exact values of the points of inflection. And so all three of these numbers are points of inflection because the concavity changes. So when you put all this together, you know, you identify your intercepts, which you probably have to use a calculator for some of them to, to approximate them. But we had these three intercepts. And then, then I identified my relative max and my relative min, which were these points. And then I identified my points of inflection, which were here and here okay and there's also one here okay and then if you go back and look you know once you plot the all those points and then you start thinking you start looking at what you've determined the function is increasing until you get to here but it's still concave down and then it starts decreasing it's still concave down but then the, at this point of inflection which is minus square root of a half uh, it changes to concave up, but it's still decreasing. 
and so it's still decreasing concave up but then at zero zero it it changes to concave down but it's still decreasing and then when you get to this other point of inflection um, square root of a half x equals square root of a half it changes to concave up but it's still decreasing and then when you get to one negative two it's still um, concave up but now it's increasing and then it goes through this intercept so it takes a little practice but you can you can get the graph from the information okay let's look at a rational function here's a rational function so on a rational function uh, this function is e is an even function so it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis um, it's easy to find the uh, y-intercept because if you just let x be zero and on top and bottom then you'll get negative 18 over negative 4 which is positive 9 halves so that was the x-intercept was pretty easy the y-intercept um, I mean your, that was your y-intercept your x-intercept you actually uh, set the numerator equal to zero so set this equal to zero and solve it and you get plus or minus three so the x-intercepts plus or minus three zero um, you can determine if you factor the bottom you can see that you're going to get vertical asymptotes at plus or minus two and also notice the degree of the top is the same as the degree of the bottom but if you distribute this two through you'll get two x squared for the lead coefficient, two will be the lead coefficient on top, and one's the lead coefficient on bottom. So you get a horizontal asymptote of y equal two. And then um, if you if you find the first derivative, um, the first derivative gave me 20x over x squared minus four quantity squared. And even though that that's only going to give me one critical number, x equals zero, but I do have a vertical asymptote at negative 2 and positive 2 so I'm actually going to break it at three places because I want to know what's going to happen there at negative 2 or, what's going to, or around negative 2 what's going to happen around 0 and what's going to happen around 2 so then I got test points which you know how to do that so I just plug these test points into the derivative and got the sign so for the interval negative infinity to negative 2 I got that the derivative was negative so we know it's decreasing from negative 2 to 0, the derivative is still negative, so it's decreasing. And from 0 to 2, the derivative is positive, so it's increasing. And then from 2 to infinity, it's positive. The derivative is positive, so it's increasing. So basically, it's increasing on uh, 0 to 2 and 2 to infinity, but decreasing on negative infinity to negative 2 and negative 2 to 0. And then there's actually only one extrema, because remember, negative 2 and 2 were asymptotes. So x equals 0, the, the graph goes from uh, decreasing to increasing, so I actually get a relative minimum at that. So that's my extrema. Now, um, points of inflection, well, when I, when I uh, did the second derivative, I got this. And there's no way that um, the numerator can equal 0. If you try to solve that, you'll only get imaginary numbers. So that can't this the second that's the second derivative the second derivative cannot equal zero now but you can check for concavity around the two asymptotes the two vertical asymptotes negative two and two so to the left of negative two the second derivative was negative so it's concave down to the right of negative two it's positive so concave up and then to the to the right of two it's negative so it's concave down well again when you put all this together you got your two x, you got your two uh, x intercepts, and then you plot your y intercept, and then um, turns out the y intercept and the extrema are the same value here, and then you label your vertical asymptotes negative two and two, and then your horizontal asymptote remember was y equal two this this horizontal line, and now if you think about it. How can, if a graph's going to be to the left of negative 2, if you go back and look at your tests, you found that <coughs> to the left of negative 2, the graph was decreasing and concave down. So the only way it can be decreasing and concave down and go through this point is to be, is to look like this. And then to the right of positive 2, the graph was increasing and concave down, and the only way it can be increasing and concave down and go through that point is to be like this. And remember, you have the horizontal asymptote keeping it from crossing over. All right, now, in between here, 
the graph was concave up, and this was a minimum. So if you have vertical asymptotes on both sides and the graph's concave up, it's got to go through here uh, with this type of curvature. So, so that's how you kind of put it together. So you sort of piece it together. Okay, we'll do one more to end this chapter. This is a radical function. So this um, 0, 0 is the only intercept. <clears throat> so if x is 0, y is 0. Okay, um, this is actually an odd function. You can check that yourself. <clears throat> the domain is all real numbers since uh, x squared will always be positive. We don't have to worry about getting a negative of the radical. And the range, uh, I didn't list the range here because I'm probably going to have to look at what's happening to get the range. So we'll figure out the range later. And this is continuous for all real numbers. Okay, asymptotes. Well, the horizontal asymptote, well, first of all, there's no vertical asymptotes because the square root cannot be zero because x squared can't equal negative two. So there's no vertical asymptotes. Now, horizontal asymptotes, I have to use that little, little trick. I'm going to get two of them. So if you remember that radical function earlier, as x goes to infinity, I divide the top and bottom by positive square root, or by positive x and positive square root of x squared. And then when I get that limit, I'm actually going to get 1 over 1. And then as x goes to negative infinity, I divide the top by x, but I divide the bottom by minus square root of x squared. And then um, that's going to give me that minus here. So I'm going to have 1 over minus 1. So I'm going to get minus 1 for the horizontal asymptote. And then um, when I did the first derivative, I didn't get any critical numbers. So... And actually, this number, this derivative is always positive. So, and there wasn't any vertical asymptotes to check either. So, so I just found that this derivative is always positive because you've got 2 over, what's x squared plus 2? A positive number. So a positive number to a power is positive. So this function is increasing over its entire domain. And there's not, not going to be an extrema. Now, when I found the second derivative, I did find where the second derivative could be 0 because... If negative 6x is 0, then that second derivative would be 0. So I'm going to check it here at 0. I'm going to check to the left of 0 and to the right of 0 and see what's happening with the concavity. So if I plug negative 1 in, I'm going to get a positive number. So the graph is concave up. So the graph is concave up on 0. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm sorry. Underline wrong one. Concave up on negative infinity to 0. And then when I plug positive 1 in, I got a negative, so it's concave down on 0 to infinity. Okay, so when we put all this together, well, first of all, really all we can point draw here is our uh, intercept 0, 0. And then I went ahead and drew my horizontal uh, lines here. Now, remember, this function is increasing the entire time. So if you think about it, the only way it could be increasing and go through this point and this be a horizontal asymptote over here and then this be a horizontal asymptote over here is if it starts down here close to this asymptote and then comes up through here and then finishes at this asymptote. Now do notice though that the concavity does change here at 0, 0. Notice it's got that it's got that upward concavity on this side, but then on this side of 0, 0, it's got that downward concavity. Okay, so basically this is just using everything that we learned in the chapter to, to learn how to sketch graphs without cheating. And what I mean by cheating, without using uh, a calculator or a graphing utility. And that, that ends our discussion on application of derivatives. In the ne next chapter, we're actually going to talk about uh, new types of functions to bring into play called exponential and log functions.